It's no secret, I love kale, don't you? I mean, I pretty much throw it into everything from pastas to soups, and I buy it nearly every time I go grocery shopping. Maybe that's why when I was rummaging through my fridge, I noticed that I had four bunches of kale. Yeah, I know, the obsession has to stop. But that's why I knew it was time to make my kale salad with garlic croutons. It's bright, fresh, healthy, and tasty. And the best part is, is that it gets better and better as it sits, so you can make it ahead. So pull out your salad spinner and I'll show you how to make it. I know everyone's into kale these days, and I can understand why. It's one of the healthier things you could possibly eat. So for my kale salad with garlic croutons, you're gonna need kale, grape tomatoes, garlic, Dijon mustard, bread, a lemon, Parmesan cheese, olive oil, and honey. So you can see that I'm just stripping the leaves off of the stalks because the stalks of the kale, as you probably know if you cook with it, is kind of woody, so it's a little hard to digest and chew. If you like it, you can keep it on, but I tend to not really like it, so it's really easy. Just do this, grab it, and pull. And last one. Wow, that's a huge mountain. Now you're just gonna kinda scrunch it up in your hands and make little thin ribbons. And the reason you wanna make thin ribbons is because kale is kind of a tougher leaf, so it just makes it easier to chew and turns it a little bit more palatable and soft. Okay, and we're done. Okay, gonna go wash it now. nice and dry. Dump your shredded kale into a large bowl, but don't worry if you don't have like the hugest bowl in the world because it will shrink down. You could always use the bowl of your salad spinner too, just rinse it out first. And this is the important step to basically any kale salad. Like I said before, kale is very hard. If you, even if you touch it, it feels kind of plasticky. And so you need to break down the fibers. So what you do, is you get a little bit of olive oil, just a drizzle, and then some salt. And this isn't really to season it, so you don't have to go crazy over it. And all you're gonna do is give it a little attention, some TLC, and all I'm doing is scrunching it, and it's so satisfying. Do you hear that squeaking? That's why a lot of times people say that they make a massage kale salad, and that's all this is. And look how much it shrank down. Already I could tell it's so much softer. I'm interested to know, do you guys eat kale salad already? Or what's your favorite way to eat kale? Comment below, let me know. And I'm just going to leave this here and let it chill out while I chop some tomatoes and then make a vinaigrette. I'm just cutting up some grape tomatoes that are washed and I'm filling it up to see if I have about a cup when it's halved. So that's pretty much most of a container. And if you have more than a cup, that's totally up to you. I just think that this adds a nice little burst of sweetness and freshness against the green kale. It's totally up to you if you want to add more vegetables or other things to your salad. Now, let's make our vinaigrette. I just minced that one clove of garlic for our vinaigrette. And I'm gonna make a Dijon honey vinaigrette because I think that it just balances really well against the bitter greens of the kale. And it actually makes the kale not taste bitter. So you have your lemon. And you know my thing, 
I really think that everyone should zest their lemons before you add the juice, get more bang for your buck. I'm kind of greedy, so I make sure I get like every last bit. Okay. And now the juice, rolling it releases more of the pulp and the juice. If you don't have one of these guys, don't worry about it. It does kind of squeeze out every last drop of the lemon juice, but it's totally fine if you just use your hands and catch the seeds. Ooh. And don't worry about that raw garlic in, being in there because the lemon juice actually makes it less spicy. Kind of marinates the garlic, softens and mellows it. If you didn't have a lemon, you could use vinegar. Maybe about two tablespoons of vinegar would do the trick. You know me and mustard, remember what happened last time? About one tablespoon. Now we're gonna add a tablespoon of honey and this balances out the lemon juice. Gives it a little bit of sweetness without being overly cloyingly sweet. And then a quarter cup of olive oil. And the two-handed action of whisking while streaming. And the honey and the Dijon acts as the emulsifier in this situation. And it's all emulsified. I do this little bowl spin action sometimes too. Remember with vinaigrettes, homemade vinaigrettes, you do want to season with a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. If you don't know what to taste means, start off with a quarter teaspoon and go from there. Okay, so that's about all she wrote. Time to give a little dressing to this salad. The kale's gotten a little bit softer as I sat there in the olive oil and salt, and that's perfect. But if you taste it right now, it still has a hint of bitterness, which is kind of unpleasant, but it's much softer, so that's good. So you're gonna get your sharp, balanced vinaigrette, and you're gonna pour about, I would say two thirds of the dressing over the salad first. Every head of kale is different, and so yours might be kind of small, and you don't wanna to put too much dressing on it, it'll be kind of too salty, too flavored. So I like to go about that much, and then you can, kind of let it sit and do its thing. It's kind of like marinating in a way. This is great to make ahead because the leaves are so sturdy that it can just take this, this dressing and just sit and sit. And there you go. So I'm gonna move on to my garlic croutons. I mean, what's better than homemade garlic croutons? If you wanna know how to make it, well then just keep on watching. So you're gonna coat a large pan with some olive oil, and you're gonna add two smashed cloves of garlic. Don't worry about mincing them up, and don't worry about preheating your oil. The whole point is for the garlic to infuse the oil, so it's better when it's a little bit cold and it just kinda heats up together. So what I have here is three slices of Italian bread, and the recipe is for day-old bread. But in my case, I didn't have just day-old bread. I had bread in my freezer, and that's what you can do too. I just pull out of the freezer and then cut it into about half inch thick slices. And then instead of waiting for a day for it to get stale, I just popped it into a 300 degree oven and just let it dry out or toast slightly without any color. That's all it means. Just so it gets a little bit stiffer and easier to cut. And then it turns more um, kind of like a cracker so that you can let it absorb the garlic oil. And I'm using three pieces, but you know, most likely I'm gonna probably have a lot of croutons and maybe too many croutons for your salad, but that's okay because you're gonna snack on them while you're making this anyway. So it's good to have extra. Make sure that your garlic doesn't burn in the oil. So all I'm doing is just kinda let it swim, kinda bathe in the oil. When you can smell it and it's insane, like this beautiful garlic aroma, it's getting there. Then you know that it's, it's done. If you're neurotic, you can cut these into tiny, perfect little squares, but I like it looking kind of misshaped and organic. These bread cubes are like little sponges and they'll soak up this flavor of the oil. Okay, I think it's done. Ooh, super fragrant. Give it a toss. Do you see how that oil just disappeared? It's crazy. It's because the bread is stale or dried out. 
so it was hungry for, it was thirsty for the oil. A little bit of salt and pepper. You gotta flavor your croutons. If you wanted to add other seasonings or spices, go ahead. I'm just trying to keep it simple. I just did that to show off, just kidding. Not really, maybe. And now you're just gonna let them brown just a little bit. You don't want them to turn really brown, just a little bit golden brown, just toasty and crunchy. Do you guys like bread in your salads? Croutons or bread pieces? I think I do, I think that's why I like Caesar salads. Okay, I think we're there. So I'm just gonna dump it back on my sheet pan I used to dry out my croutons and keep them aside. And the reason why you wanna make this many croutons is for this. You want one? Okay, now it's assembly time, so I'm gonna Taste a little leaf. It's been sitting in the dressing for a little bit while I made the croutons. Mm. It's zesty and bright. I'm just gonna add a little more. I'm gonna put on a platter. Doesn't that look so pretty already? And our sweet grape tomatoes. The red and the green. Makes me feel like singing Christmas music now. Cheerful, right? A cheerful salad. And now what's left of our garlic croutons. I think my husband and I ate a pretty much a quarter of it already. Get a vegetable peeler and make some short shavings of Parmesan cheese and put it over. This adds another dimension of flavor. So then more than like a garnish, I would say consider it part of the salad as an important part. If you don't feel like doing this, you could just get shredded Parmesan cheese and sprinkle it on top. I mean, and there you have it. Now I'm gonna go over there and give it a taste. The only thing I could describe this salad is, is zingy. You, you taste a hint of that one garlic clove permeating throughout everything. And even though there's honey in it, it's actually not that sweet. It just counterbalances out the bitterness of the greens. And there's not a hint of bitterness in it at all. And because you massaged the kale, the leaves become almost as soft and tender as butter lettuce. Perfect. Okay. Let me offer you some suggestions. If you didn't want to add tomatoes and you want to make it more festive in autumn, then you can try roasting up some sweet potatoes or some squash and throw it in there. If you want to make it more chewy and sweet and tart, then add some dried cranberries. You can add nuts, seeds, basically anything you want. But I like this just the way it is because I feel like it's simplicity at its best and the flavor really shines through. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Remember to push like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Mmm, the cheese adds the perfect little, mmm. It'll be good in here, some bacon.